Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will show you how to parse on Mythic Champions. Just to make one thing perfectly clear, this is not a raid boss. This is a slightly more difficult trash mob that gives you loot, that helps you kill the first raid boss, which is Gronk. But seeing as how it is on Warcraft logs, I'll just give you a few pointers anyway. First of all, there's three strategies that you can use. First strategy is what most people do on progress, where you tank the boss and the ad separate. And whenever the boss gets to 100 energy and changes seals, you switch to the ads, kill them, then change back to the boss. If you're doing this strategy, don't even try to parse. It's a complete waste of time because you're just going to be losing out on a lot of damage. The second and third strategy are both pretty decent for parsing, with one being significantly better than the other. The second strategy, which I will show you here, um, is where you tank the boss and the ads separate, but you hit the boss the entire time. You never switch off of the boss until she dies. Now with this strategy, you can get a pretty decent rank because you just keep your dots on the ads and you just spam epidemics the entire fight. Um, then for the third strategy, you can actually tank the ads on top of the boss and nuke everything down. But for this strategy, you need very high rate damage and you need very good healing cooldowns because the boss will be at basically over 100 stacks, um, I think actually close to 100 by the time you finish the fight. And whenever she does her AoE towards the end of the fight, the entire raid damage will almost get one shot. So if you have raid cooldowns like uh, Spirit Link and maybe Double Darkness, then you can live it. Um, but outside of that, it's very, very iffy. So actually I'll roll the footage here. As far as talent builds go, um, whatever strategy you choose to do, just go with default on holy build with epidemic. Now for trinkets, unused trinkets are great for this fight because it lasts uh, such a short amount of time. And as far as the kill time goes, you can usually kill the boss at around 120 to 130. If you kill the boss at around 115, that's pretty good. But if you kill the boss between 120 and 130, that's going to be a little bit worse for your damage because that's where your second Unholy Frenzy would be coming up. So with this strategy, what you want to do is basically just keep your dots on the adds the entire time and only cast Death Coil if you get Sudden Doom procs. If you don't get procs, then just cast Epidemics. As far as AMS goes, there's basically two things that you can AMS. The first thing is these mallets that come out from the adds that fly towards the raid. And I recommend AMSing those if you're not going to be dodging them or if you're doing this default strategy. In the second strategy that I will be showing you, it's better to AMS the AoE damage. Now, as you can see here, we are barely a minute into this fight, uh, so 56 seconds, and the boss is already at 20% HP. Uh, the adds actually got moved a little too far and I couldn't dot them up, so I end up running out here just to refresh those dots. Um, again, this is a parsing strategy, it's not optimized for boss damage, it's not optimized for killing the boss, I just want to do as much overall damage as possible. So right now I'm sitting at 39k. Unholy has very very good burst damage. Um, out, out of all of the classes, Unholy is one of the highest. Usually during opener you will be just behind the Warlocks, uh, but there's not really other classes that can compete with Unholy burst damage whenever we use army and everything together. But after that, we just slowly fall down, slowly fall down. And it's just a matter of killing the boss as soon as possible before you, far, you fall too far down on the damage meter. So we're at 56 seconds. This ends up being a 1 minute 18 second uh, kill, which was rank 1 for speed. So there I dot up the adds and then go back on the boss. Now, one thing that you should be doing is macroing your pet attack uh, into something that you only use on the boss or just having a separate keybind for it. I have a separate keybind for it, but I didn't notice until I actually reviewed this footage that my pet ends up running over to the ads, then back to the boss whenever I refresh the dots. And that is a huge damage loss because that pet will do, you know, a, a pretty big percent of your damage. And it's spending 10 seconds out of a minute and 18 seconds running to the ads, then back to the boss is a huge waste of time. So again, with this strategy, uh, dot up the ads, keep your dots on them. Make sure your pet is either staying on the ads or staying on the boss. Doesn't really matter which one. Um, if you don't run Warlocks and they're not Warlocks and Shadow Priest, 
and they're not just murdering the ads super quick, you can actually have your pet be on the ads the entire time because you will get a little more pet damage out of that because of the dark transformation and it being able to cleave three targets instead of just one, uh, while you obviously have to be hitting the boss. Now, I'm going to show you a clip of the second strategy here. Okay, so for this video, we will be stacking the ads onto the boss and just cleaving everything down. Now, this is the first time we did this, and there were a few things that were not quite ironed out yet with the strategy. Um, so it ended up not working out for us, but I believe that if we can do this correctly, this will be by far the best uh, damaging and speed kill strategy that we could be doing. So we're running one tank and two healers, a Holy Paladin and a Resto Shaman. Roll the clip here. Um, we do a pull timer. Now, since this kill is so short, you definitely want to army on pull. And this is one of the few fights where you might actually want to consider casting Dark Transformation, the global, before you actually pull the boss. Uh, I don't think I end up doing that here, but after I looked at the footage, I thought that that would be a decent idea. So as you can see, we stack everything up. So I go in, I do a default opener, and the first ability that is going to be dropped is this pool that you have to move the boss and the adds out of. So that's why I haven't used my death and decay yet. Also, since everyone is doing so much AoE damage, these disciples will just get absolutely murdered. Um, so you don't really have time to ramp up before having to drop your death and decay. So I recommend just getting outbreaks uh, out and then just using Epidemic as often as possible before those targets die. So as soon as that pool drops, I drop my DND because I know where the boss will be moving along with the ad. And then I just cleave on two targets. Now this Blinding Fate comes in, you have to position yourself a little bit to turn away from it, but still be cleaving the ad. And look at this damage right here. So I was at 70,000 DPS, okay? Um, now I'm at 67.9. From here, the boss is at 61% HP. We're 20 seconds into the fight. It's just a matter of killing the boss before I fall below about 40k DPS, which would have been rank 1 by far. Rank 1 at this time when I did this video was 36 point something. And I think I ended up this fight at about 34k. So... We go in, as you can see, the boss already has 60 stacks. That's from killing the adds next to the boss. So the raid will be taking an absolute insane amount of damage. If you get hit by these hammers, they just kill you. As you can see there, we lost a hunter and we end up losing another person. Right there, we lost a boomkin. So we're 40 seconds into the fight and we're down two DPS. Now Zexen, our warlock there, had a dot. But since the boss has so many stacks, that dot will absolutely murder you. So if you get hit by anything you're not supposed to with this strategy, you will just die. So this is what actually turns the boss into an actual fight. So we're down 3 DPS. Our kill time at this point is absolutely ruined um, because we're down 3 people. So if we roll the footage here, shortly here we will get a burst of AoE damage that we need to make sure we have absolutely everything down on the ground for. Every single cooldown that we can use to mitigate that damage. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but Darkness was actually dropped a little bit earlier there. Um, I assume they dropped it kind of reactively, but it wasn't for, it wasn't for the AoE damage. Um, it was just mitigating some, some overall damage. It is very important to drop your Darkness and your Spirit Link whenever the raid damage comes out, which is this Judgment Reckoning cast. So you can see my weak aura here says raid damage. The boss is at 68 stacks at this point. If this goes off and you're not at 100% HP, you're going to get one shot. And this is also worth AMSing. So I use my AMS, I believe, during the mallets. Uh, but again, after looking back at this footage, it's probably way better to just use it on this raid damage because it's guaranteed to save uh, a lot of HP. And since you will be in Spirit Link if you do this correctly, you're also boosting the damage or the HP of your raid. So we roll that. As you saw, there was a huge amount of damage. We actually end up losing one more person. And from here, you just take insane amount of raid damage. We're at 1 minute and 15 seconds. Um, I'm going to actually pause this here. This is probably where the boss would have died if we didn't lose those 3 DPS. So at 115, I would have been at 35k DPS. So that, that would have been about close to a rank 1. I think it would have been like a rank 3. Uh, but with a few things ironed out, 
with this strategy you can actually do the most damage i believe out of all of the strategies as long as you do this correctly so as you can see from here on we just kind of uh you know struggle to survive but we end up just killing the boss anyway this strategy if done correctly i believe is the best one for speed kills and for parsing on unholy dk um the other strategy that i showed before this can be decent if you're not running a bunch of warlocks and multi daughters that just destroy the the ads very quickly because if you're able to get three target cleave with your epidemics for an extended duration uh that will be actually very beneficial but thank you so much for watching this video and if you have any questions about this fight or unholy dk make sure to leave it in the comment section and if you want just some general unholy dk tips make sure to check out my written guide which will be pinned in my discord Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.